Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO. I'm your host, Mercenary Mocha Lover, and let's talk about a decrease in poverty first. Thanks for greater poverty relief efforts, as well as expansion of our civilian economy. The poverty rate has decreased significantly enough to be notable internationally. As the government congratulates its its efforts, the first official state projections on the impact of this improved popular prosperity are filed, seeing that the people are now act able to access superior goods. Economic opportunity shall be greatly increased, and our workforce shall be capable of greater and greater feats, a toast for economists. Great. Great, great, great. And the Wizard King of Siberia. Mitchell Warble III looked out over the Siberian expanse, cigar clamped in his teeth. The Wizard of Whispering Death was clad in heavy furs against the cold of the Russian Far East, though the cold still stung his cheeks. He didn't care. Today was his day. Central Siberia was now finally in his hands, and misfits, fanatics, and goons of the region now six feet under. Gosh darn, today was a good day to be Mitchell Warble of the Third. The lights of Cheetah twinkled below him from his balcony stop the atop the former Tsar's palace, just as the bright Siberian stars shone above him. Warble was always surprised at how bright the stars could be on the frontier. He chuckled to himself at that. The frontier this certainly was, and Warble was tra a trailblazing cowboy with an American guns and toys, ready to make his mark on the savage land. Yes, that's what we would call it, his frontier, his United States of Siberia. He could hardly believe that the circumstances that had brought him to this place, they called him Von Siatsky, the coup, the subsequent wars, everything he could have turned on a dime and sunk Werbel like a stone, but Lady Luck had been in his corner the whole time. The Wizard of Whispering Death let out a cloud of smoke against the night sky, savoring in his victory, and in the tobacco haze, he could taste future victories to come. Africa history is bone. And now we shall do Fastification of the Great Giant, Art of Living Dangerously. Let's go do that one, since we are trying to score more stuff. Central Siberia has had a long history. First colonized by the Empire hundreds of years ago, a spate of industrial development brought about by the Siberian plan has turned the region into a new center of industry within Russia. With this came the development of political ideologies perhaps not seen elsewhere in the Western world, anarchism, thought long dead that still follows in Kansk. Novosibirsk and Tomsk, antithesis of each, antithesis of each other, were within a stone's throw of each other. These varieties might seem interesting to the historian, but for the administrators of the Republic, this is a nightmare. To pacify the great giant, the Republic of West Alaska shall use a carrot and stick approach. We will need collaborators, and a lot of them. If they're with us, they shall join us. If not, then they are insurgents to be put down in the name of law and order. And I'm going to wait to core more stuff just because, well, that focus allows us to core more stuff more quickly. So that'd be very good. Very high relations. We've invested a lot in regional development, and now we can go ahead and get involved in more wars. Now, you guys, some of you guys didn't like it that I got involved with the falling of S Spanish. I was either that or the despotists. They weren't. They didn't care about freedom or liberty at all. So, as far as I understand, but we do have people down here in Oman, and of all people to help out, it's either the Dofa Rebellion or it's the uh, conservative democracy group. So I don't mind helping the de conservative democracy group. They won't be disappointed. All right, let's see what we can do. We need to consent how many people? Up to four divisions. Now, Oman is going to suck in terms of infrastructure. Oh, it's going to be really bad. So, sending 40 combat widths is not a great idea. But I'm going to send, like, maybe two. Because I know supply is not going to be very good down here. So, I'll send two. If we need to send more, obviously we can send more. But, you know. There you go. And the last time we did make sure that all these guys were 40 combat width. Except for one special forces division. Stockholm Conference fails. We do have some coffee with us to keep us nice and warm. But we're really, really, really lacking a lot of guns. Tons of guns. Some anti-tank as well as... Actually, we're doing okay on artillery now, huh? Transport helicopters, of course. But whatever. An army of leftovers. They were sorry a lot. And Vasily knew, but they were all Russia had against the American monster of the East. Soldiers from Tomsk, Anarchists, uh, Silvex, Eurek, Loyalists, the Mutineers, and Red Army vestiges made up the forces. They numbered at the most 200 at the start, but their skirmishes with the mercenaries had dwindled their numbers further. And now there are perhaps 40 of them left. They hugged the tree line in the last warriors of Central Siberia, watching the truck convoy of the so-called United States of Siberia roll through the woods. They were outnumbered by the mercenaries, but a quick strike might earn them much-needed supplies and another day of resistance. Ludmila, a Silovic, peered through the sights of her rifle, waiting for Vasily's signal. Peter, an anarchist, raised his RPG. Finally, Vasily waved his head forward. Ludmila's rifle cracked. Peter's RPG roared, and a dozen other small arms weapons discharged on the convoy. A rocket slammed onto the side of the truck, the explosion flipping it on its side in a fiery conflagration. A bullet ate brain meat, and the driver of the lead truck fell dead, the vehicle careening into a tree. It was all the chaos and the death as mercenaries shouted and sighted targets, the partisans rushing to grab whatever equipment they could. Vasily scampered over a dead mercenary, rushing to the back of one of the downed trucks. He tore open the tarp and gave a quiet, quiet cheer as he saw the medical crates his movement so desperately needed. He gave it a start whirling 
uh, as, as he felt a harsh thump in his ribs. Had someone struck him? Vasily turned, wondering why his vision was swimming. A black man in sunglasses with one of the fancy American rifles fired again, a second shot taking Vasily out at the knees. As his vision faded, Vasily watched as his companions fell. Uh, the rate, final raid off for nothing. 40 less bandits to worry about. Very good. Love it. A new Siberian economy. Uh, expanding the federal system. Expanding our network. Uh, as much as I want to do that one, expanding the federal system would be good so we get slightly decreased scoring times. When our dear leader made the executive decision to federalize our state along the lines of the U.S. of America, we made the steps towards a radical, if not a bright future. That being said, that future is very far from accomplished. That's what's said in name is much different than what's done in practice. It's done to formalize the federalization of the United States of Siberia. While well, America created states based off purely off geographic and political considerations, Russia is a bit different. We'll be creating states based off geographical parameters as well, but and Siberia has the unique reality of vastly different minorities spread throughout her territories too. Thus, we don't only base our states on geography, but on cultural and ethnic lines. Besides, giving states to minorities like the Barats and Yakuts won't help bring them over to our side. Now, what's going on in Sudan? Uh, Sudanese Civil War. The South Sudanese. There's two Sudanese Civil Wars going on at the same time. So, um, we could probably help them out. See, conservative democracy. Authoritarian democracy is probably more like what we want to help out. So, I guess Sudan Defense Force. And then, what was it? Anayaya? Or whatever it is. Well, let's just do two at a time, because it's, it's just... I don't want to get too involved in this stuff, so... And we're pretty much done with Spain anyways. Or Iberia. Yeah, they keep killing those guys off, but... You know... They didn't, they didn't pay that well. Liberal democracy, we don't really care for them. Then again, fascists, we probably care even for the last snow. We don't care about any of them. <laughs> Alright, we're here in Muscat. Led by Pavlova and such. And Co, I should really say. As long as we don't move, we'll be okay. Nice. Very good. Actually, could you guys get in? Oh, wow, There's there were four divisions in there. We won. Wow. Don't move because our guys... <clears throat> well, they're still missing helicopters, so what do you expect? Alright, next up, the next focus will be spreading our network. Slightly decreased coring times even more. Industrial expertise is okay. Employment opportunities... More military factors would be re really, really nice, actually. Army professionalism, a call to Uncle Sam. Let's do spreading our network. We created an intelligence agency. Despite our victory over the Central Siberian opponents, the stark reality of our situation is that as foreigners now reigning over their people, significant resistance to our administration still remains. We don't blame them. The vast degree of change we've wi they've witnessed has been more than disruptive. But just because we don't blame them doesn't mean we can't tolerate their simmering dissent. More, once more, we must look to our friends in America for inspiration. Warbolt's cabinet have decided to create the Strategic Services Unit, or SSU, to root out dissenters and would-be revolters in our newly conquered Siberian territories in order to discourage any potential action against our government. After all, if the Americans can do it in the name of liberty, why can't we? Setting a precedent. I'm sorry, Mr. Nakamura. There's nothing more I can do, the new senator for the state of Kamchatka, Lev Semenov, said to the aging man. Mr. Nakamura was a representative for the few hundred individuals who identified as... I knew and the state Lev represented. Nakamura shook his head, going into the same speech given a hundred times, under the Tsar, under the Japanese, and under the Communists, each and every time the I knew were persecuted. Already many have been executed in the forced conversion, conversion strategies of their oppressors, and now they were denied a state of their own. Lev sympathized with them. He truly did. He fought alongside two Ainu mercenaries during the early days of Orwell's grand scheme. Good, fierce men with, with a, from a hardy culture. Now as a senator, it was his duty to help them. Unfortunately, there wasn't simply enough Ainu living to justify the creation of their own state. <clears throat> Mr. Nakamura, that wasn't the only reason I called you here. You see, having spoken to the president himself, I'm confident we can secure for you and your people a privileged minority status. Many other Siberian ethnicities are receiving the same. It helps out for such a small population. The Ainu have contributed quite a bit, quite a few capable soldiers. You understand that soldiers hold quite a powerful sway in our nation, right? Lev left the meeting feeling happy, knowing that dozens of conversations were happening as the new states were being put into effect. He wasn't sure where this experiment of a country might end up. He wasn't certain of the foreign influence either, for that matter. What he was certain of was that he was going to set a precedent here, in the poorest state of the, newest fed of the new federal union. There was hope on the horizon for Lev. We started out only as a mercenary from Manchuria. Before the old man left his office, he turned and said to Lev, Iria Kelly, Kelly, Senator. I'm not really sure what that means. <clears throat> Even the comments could explain that to me. And watership down, once Julian and Magadan. 
Falquez found himself walking down the street in an attempt to clear his thoughts and might have seemed to be an ordinary man were he not so clearly extraordinary. Just as he began to relax, he saw a strangely familiar face that stared right back at him. You there? I don't know you, he asked in imperfect English. The other man's face similarly lit up in recognition. Falquez? Roger Falquez? It is you! He laughed and took one of Falquez's hands in both of his hands. It's me! Tarusis Kolalski. I served with you back in the Congo. It's great to see that you're still in one piece. How have you been? Ah, as good as can be expected considering everything that's happened. Falquez replied with a small smile on Kowalski's enthusiasm. And how are you? Last I heard you were trying to put as much uh, distance between yourself and between yourself and Poland as possible. Yes, well, Kowalski shrugged sadly. I fear that Poland, as we both know, it might be lost forever. Whatever becomes of it, I won't be able to recognize it anymore. But the same with you in France, isn't it? You know how it is. Yes, well, uh, Falquez sighed hopelessly. Ever since Himmler carved out a state, no, ever since we lost the World War, really, it's lost whatever it once made it my homeland. And both soldiers without a place to return to, it seems. We should do what we can to make Russia into a place for any soldier, any from lands living or dead, can call home. Kowalski said decisively, turning surprising Falquez. He patted him on the shoulder and turned to, turned to walk away. It was good to see you, Falquez. Don't give up just yet. Falquez, uh, I, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. <laughs> Falquez stood there stunned as Kowalski t walked off into the distance. A new homeland for people like us. There's no place like home. That's disappointing. I know it's disappointing, you know. We help poverty, but we don't get... We still have a big old deficit. Ten and a half is not bad, though. That's a lot of GDP. I think it's time to circle these guys. There we go. We'll be able to win. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start coring one more territory piece, just because... I don't want to wait too long. So, it doesn't really matter. Krasnoyarsk is usually pretty good to do, so. That'd be good. And I'm not going to kill these guys off. I'm going to let the AI do it. I don't want to waste supplies and manpower. Manpower. Very good. Mole divisions? Don't mind if we do. I'm going to go... I guess technically this makes actually a lot of sense why this happened, just because I made all of our divisions 40 combat with, so we have to spend more money on them anyway, so. Hey, strategic services unit, nice. Now we could spend civilian factories for this stuff. What are we actually building? More factories? Eh, we'll keep building factories for now, actually. That's fine. And a rejuvenated civil service. Foreigners, aliens, wanted mercenaries, these names are just a sample of what many native Russians think of our administration. It's feared decades of political mismanagement and political oppression has resulted in their inherent distrust of any new government, especially one that's led by an American citizen. But just because we don't trust us, they don't trust us, doesn't mean we don't trust, we don't need them. Many of the people we can rely on are mercenaries, soldiers at heart, and a good soldier does not make a bureaucrat, does not a bureaucrat make. So considering how many of our competitors we've defeated, there's a gold mine of potential administrators just waiting to be recruited by our United States, and with any gold mine we should exploit until nothing's left. Very good. Always someone with ideas. Katya was back from that sit in the country. It was good to be in Magadan, thanks. A place now of light, of light and life. And it was, it was anyone lived here. That included the big fish for a new agency. When she left the capital, she was an agent with a handler. Now she was a director for the Department of Domestic Conspiracies and Strategic Service Unit. It felt good. It felt official. And the band with her was a new recruit on the first mission. Next to him was a CIA instructor who pretended not to be CIA but a normal American mercenary. In the building across the street was a meeting of students being radicalized by a firebrand in the building next to them. Twin or so agents ready to strike at a moment's notice. Katya knew no better, knew better than to trust him. Have they said anything important, Katya said, or asked the recruit? The young man shook his head. Katya let out a sigh. Seems like this isn't working, Katya said. And then she waited and added, Alright, we're going in. <clears throat> Mr. CIA let out a gasp and said in his clipped Russian, You can't be doing that evidence. Katya turned to him with a grin, cocking back in 19 M 1911. Our states aren't your states, cowboy. The recruit racked, uh, racked back a German surplus rifle and three of them busted inside the meeting. It was a congregation of some youth agitators who wanted to return to socialism. A picture of Salbin hung at the corner, which made Katya almost gag. Could, couldn't these steps find someone else to idolize? At least Lynn had a nice beard. Her intuition to march in was correct. The leader the ho was hoarding stolen guns from the army surplus. It was a win, then, to stop this idiot before he got all these kids killed. <clears throat> what are you going to do with them, Mr. CIA asked the, once the last were put up. The leader? Captain replied, ten years for the theft, probably. Others can weaken, shame, and threaten. Split them up. But maybe bug their landlines at home to see if they're worth, if they're trying anything afterwards. With that, Katya walked off towards her favorite bar. She had finished the job early, hasn't she? Time to relax. Gosh darn, it feels good to be official. <laughs> That's funny. Soblin, can't they figure anyone else out, like, jewel over? <laughs> they can probably win there. Alright, let's send these guys. Put some heavy, you know, firepower with these Omani peoples. Nice. 
Just get rid of these guys. God, I love I love special forces so much. They're just so fast. It's it's just ridiculously so fast. Oh, and they try to attack me because they thought I left, but I never left. <clears throat> My apologies, military budget boost. Um, I think we're done. Boost. Oh, there we go. Nice. I'm done boosting up the military budget. Even though it would help us put output more, I think we'll be okay. We should be relatively okay for doing that. Actually, let's take a look at this. Uh, seven days, we'll have enough time for, for another focus. Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, a new Siberian economy. There are many politics of, uh, or poli polities? Polites of the Central Siberia have implemented various economic plans that match their potential uh, political alignment. To varying degrees of success, however, none have tried the American style of capitalism. The Federation of Nova Siberia and Altai came the closest, but its focus on the corporations of, on disgust and ire from all, even the most freedom loving American. With economic freedom, must come personal freedom. This, in world's eyes, have always been the American way. Therefore, we must be a rejuvenation of the economy under American principles if the United States of Siberia were to prosper. Our sister republic across the Bering Strait has taught us much, and her prosperity stands tall for all the world to see. It is only prudent and sensible that we should learn from the Americans. I love a traitor, though. I love a traitor. And it's only expected to see an American or fellow Russian, not the 193 centimeter tall African man that followed him everywhere now. He was from the Congo, apparently, a mercenary left during the war over there. Anatoly wasn't quite sure of it, or the man's bizarre Russian accent. In the end, it didn't matter. This man would be his protector for the rest of his life. Anatoly held a significant post in Novosibirsk, and unlike everyone of a similar rank, was willing to work with a madman from Magadan. Not that he had made any, made any friends, though. Already, every single colleague agreed the provisional governor of the state of Novosibirsk death threats. Pinned to his door with a knife, of course, just to drive out that little detail home, Anatoly looked for solace among the many mercenaries flowing into the city, but only found the Congolese a decent drinking companion, largely because he didn't speak. The others were loud, largely foreign mobs that had no respect for anything besides their own pockets. This cuff's pretty good. <clears throat> it wasn't like his work was particularly important either. He signed off on orders to repair railway lines, rebuild factories, and repurpose old military surplus to be used by the... Oh, well, such a ridiculous name. The United States of Siberia, he had sold his soul not to the devil, but to an idiot. Still, the post brought him prestige, no matter a small amount of money and influence with the senators of the other states for helping grease the wheels of bureaucracy in their favor. If it helped the people of Nova Sibirsk, all the better, no? As he contemplated these matters, several bullets ricocheted from his window. The Congolese tackled up to the floor as others opened fire. After a few seconds, it was over. No casualties on either side. And until he took a moment to get into his chair, take a deep breath, and start laughing so hard until he started sobbing. Great. Let's keep going more stuff. Tuva, I love Tuva. Support weapons. Actually, how many? How much political power do we get every day? Happy 1970, though, everyone. Wow, 0.59. That's really bad. But that's just because we're recording as much as we possibly can. Let's grab some better rifles, the AKNs. Uh, I love the AK family. Just take out these guys. We'll be good. Actually, didn't we send? Oh, we didn't send volunteers yet. You know what? That's fine. And we're there. They're done. And I'll send Falkaz to another region of the world, too. Probably over here, next. Don't want to send too many soldiers. Also, how much money are we... Oh, that's not good. We could slash it. I'm actually going to increase spending again. Wow, that's a lot. I could decrease... That does help out with the budget. Even though the budget doesn't really matter too much. But that's alright. Hey. We'll help out Sudan. We'll help out Antalya. Or Antia. Wow. Janena Rodhevstevsky. Counterintelligence? Yeah, I like this one. But you're just gonna go and help put down resistance in places, if possible. There you go. Thank you. <clears throat> Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That's a nice icon. These three are the inalienable rights of every human being, as stated by the American Constitution, inscribed in the founding document of the U.S. of A. It has become the adage of almost every American. These three rights have seen America through to becoming the greatest power far above German Japan, the sole shining example of liberty that burns brightly in a world consumed by darkness. The Siberian Constitution should contain the same principles. First, life. Everyone has a right to live, that much is clear. Second, liberty. Though freedom of enterprise, or through the freedom of enterprise, we shall seek to give personal freedom to every Siberian that participates within the market. Third, the pursuit of happiness. We shall give protections to private property and deregulate some of our laws to accommodate those who rush headlong into pursuing happiness. With these three, we can ensure that the, that the United States of Siberia should become a worthy sister to its sibling across the Bering Strait. Awesome. All right, Falquez, you don't get too comfortable. You're heading on over to South, to Africa, kind of Central-ish Africa. So Southern North Africa, or Northern Central Africa. I don't know how you, you categorize Africa too much. So even more factories and yeah, more divisions. Not bad because we will need more divisions probably. 
Make sure you guys get up top. And we're still making a few in infrastructure, so I'm not too worried about that. Not bad. Oh, actually, time for another army? Nice. Civilian con oh, good. I love civilian construction. <clears throat> uh, Valkaz. Uh, planning speed. A lot of mercs. I want someone who's not a merc. Roy Larson is a merc. Well, I guess we gotta do Gurgi. Well, whatever. This is really getting kind of ugly around here. It doesn't really matter how it looks like right now. If anything, actually, can we intervene? Oh, we want to integrate them. I want to get involved in Kazakhstan. So, that would be actually very good if we can rush that. Next up, we shall grab... Oh, we got that one. Let's grab... Uh, Max Factor in a seat. Yes, please. Very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. <clears throat> Called Uncle Sam wouldn't be bad. I kind of want to get armed professionalism towards the sovereign state already living dangerously. While the Russian Far East is rich in resources and to a lesser extent a relatively healthy industrial base, that's completely and utterly lacking in manpower. And while Central Siberia is a little better, it can't hold a candle to the vast hordes of Russian people present to our west. The fact that our army is primarily made up of foreign mercenaries, with few prospects of raising a mass force, has, raised, has made our high command acutely aware of our precarious position. Fear not, our daring leaders of Syria served us. There's an art to living dangerously. We don't need a massive army, claims Rubble. Our mercenaries have served us well up to this point. Why should that change? Our armed forces are a beacon of elitism and effectiveness across the Russian tundra, and we should play into this. Those should be no better or effective combat force in the East than those brave souls fighting for the United States of Siberia. Alright, our soldiers are here, and they're going to do a great job. Alright, let's go just like right up here or something. Um, if you like to, I know supply is so bad. I'm just I'm gonna send you guys up force, force first. Can you get up there before they do? Yes, you can, and hang out, have a good time. There you go. Oh, we we beat them so fast. Actually, where are they headed to? We're not really sure. We're just gonna follow them. I'm just toying with them at this point. There they go. There they go. Cool. Head on over there if you can. Cool. Let's go in. Ooh, you know what? I want to get involved in... Oh. Well, that's not good. I think... As much as I want to court the next place, I'm going to go ahead and court a war with the, the Kazakh Khanate. Just because... Central Siberia is just not even unified yet, so I think that'd be okay. Are living... Living dangerously. Employment opportunities. It's an open secret that the foreign mercenaries within our employ live the life of nobility. Their pocketbooks foul with plunder and a fair wage compared to the average Russian parole. Scratching out an existence in the factory or farm, they must seek like, seem like celebrities or millionaires. While we've up until this point relied on our foreign mercenaries, the upcoming West conflict will require just more than ambitious foreigners. If we can train anyone from around the world to be an elite soldier, why can't we train a Russian? It's time to create an employment opportunities in our armed forces for natives, just not to fill ranks, but to become truly elite soldiers, on part of those we've attracted from abroad. Those seeking out the most meager of existences on the civilian waste will soon be the core of a new professional and per entirely dangerous army. I did say I wanted to do that, so all this stuff doesn't really matter. There you go. There we go. Oil crest erupts. I don't think we're really affected by that. I mean, when TNO2 comes out, I can I can see us like getting actually really, really affected by that. Just because, you know, we're trading with OFN, and the OFN will be quite hurt from that, but so. The West Scholastic Dialogues, page 27. Rubble looks soberly at the Frenchman, noting his slight improved accent as he listened to the report. According to High Command, there's simply no way we can effectively wage an offensive war on an enemy outnumbered as we are. When it comes to defensive scenarios, it's a different story, but they adamantly suggest you recons. How did we get here? Rubble interjected. Well, sir, I. It was a rhetorical question. Don't answer it, son. It was rather still ex expression gave to a broad, infectious smile. We're here because we kicked everyone else's booty with half the men and twice the backbone. That's the long and short of it. We never had a favorable amount of soldiers or guns or heck even popular support. Now half of this beautiful wasteland is under our banner. Do you get what I'm saying? They just spoke up. I believe I <clears throat> rhetorical question. Gosh darn it. Or we'll chuckle for a moment before continuing. Our army served and currently serves in more conf conflicts around the world than any other superpower. From here in Siberia to Africa and the Middle East, our men fight, bleed, and die. Our other nations might have had more industry, better designs, and limitless conscripts but have the same experience. But we have the experience, discipline, and history of using both to send superior forces, running with their tails between their legs. Superior army is the best fighting force this side of Muscovy, and it'll be the best gosh darn world before I'm through. It'll be best in the world. 
The old merchant took a breath after his miniature speech, refocusing on the main on the man in front of him as as he stated himself. Now, what else does the army need? The aide opened his mouth for a second, but they closed it, staring at this president with wide eye like a deer struck dumb in the headlights of a car. The awkwardness of the silence was nearly palpable. That one wasn't rhetorical. Gosh darn it! <laughs> Eyes only. Nice. Good. Man, trying to get over rivers really sucks. There you go. Can you just go straight for Port Sudan? It should do relatively okay. Oh my gosh, the speed is so bad. Infrastructure is so bad. Oh, a lack of fuel? Oh, that's not good. Yeah. This is not good. Oh my gosh, how much is a trish? 39? What do you just stop moving? Yeah, get out of here. I'll send you guys in. I'd rather have you guys move in. Because it's, if it's going to be so slow anyways, it doesn't even matter then. Okay, a long resume. I've been looking over your record, Mr. Tarasov, said the Minister of Defense of the USS as he strolled past the table where Ivan was sitting. Both the faces were illuminated by a flicking light in the concrete wall, wall room, lending his spurring radiance to get to the great side meeting room. Ivan had been dragged here about an hour ago for what reason he thought was an interrogation. That was the only logical reason why they hadn't killed him for being a Nova Sibirsk general. He never expected what it would turn into. A job interview! Victory in the Battle of Kemerovo, victorious partisan campaign in northern Tomsk, embittered last stand in the ruins of Alte, a million more victories in bitter but hard-fought defeats. Quite a track record you have, really. Your boys put a few great of our few, a great few of our boys in the dirt. Continued the minister, and it was my job," replied Ivan, surprised at rather biting uh, addition to the list. Mr. Tarasov, you're mistaking a compliment for an accusation. What I'm saying is we could use men like you to leading our armies. They are efficient and skilled, as you've seen, but unruly, a strong hand at the lead. I see. Is that why I'm not dead? Yep. Now you get the gist, Tarasov. Now what will be another ten years in here? Drop the water, a drop of water fell from the leaky ceiling under the table, or back in the front lines, commanding honest Russian men and a few less honest foreigners. Ivan gritted his teeth before hissing reply. Fine. Wonderful. Welcome to the army. Cool. We're getting Bob in Kazakhstan. And a new a new industry for a new military. While we didn't win our past wars through sheer luck, we've had Russia's most professional army by a mile. As they pointed out, the final confrontation with our new rivals to the west is going to be far sought from what we've fought so far. Like us, our western neighbors fought tooth and nail to get to where they are. They have a large industrial base and a large population and an army that's been fighting for years. So we put it's not practical to re purely rely on American aid to aid our soldiers and supply our soldiers anymore. We're bold and thus by extension of the rest of our administration has come to the conclusion that we'll need to take advantage of a na native Russian industry to satiate our ever-growing army's hunger for weapons and material. Very good. You got quite a while to do that, so that's fine. Yeah, I'm getting our guys out of here. The supply is just too bad. I can't I can't deal with the supply. Let the infantry deal with it. So everyone else here is doing okay. There goes Iraq. Waiting American support. Yeah, it'll go lower, but I don't really care right now. It'll be alright. And reunify the motherland. Have to be after 71, which will be very soon. Oh, another division. Not bad. Oh, it's another helicopter. Oh, yes, please. Thank goodness. After this one. National Guard. Oh, we're probably going to lose some manpower then. Yep, we will. From rival to an army. Yep, yes please. It hasn't been easy with adjusting to our new local... Uh, adjusting our new local and foreign recruits to what expected of the armed forces of the United States of Siberia. That being said, the progress that we've seen has been surprisingly positive. Even the large uptick of volunteers and local recruits. The expected trade-off between quality and quantity has been much smaller than it was previously believed to be. We should capitalize on this and ensure that when the time comes, the United States of Siberia is willing and able to spread democracy and liberty through this doomed land. Come on, Mitch, you've got to admit they look pretty good. Ah, my g good, my booty. You should have seen my boys back in America. That was good. However, I can't lie. I was pretty impressed with what I saw. Those Russians sure as heck know how to do a turnabout. Maybe they have a chance to be half good soldiers after all. Maybe. Just maybe. Kemerovo's next. Good. Not bad. Fighting in Africa. Not great. Go and help put these guys down. Less, less enemies to deal with. Oh, wait. Okay, you guys did great. Abu Hamad. Awesome. Just kind of go over there and hang out. Because we're lacking so many planes now. It's my fault. My fault completely for that. Alright, from rabble to an army. The native legions. Well, the mercenary corps of Mil Siberia's military was among mo one of the more experienced forces in the world. The same cannot be quite said about the natives who made up the vast majority of the population. The population they needed to recruit in order to conduct a large-scale war against Western Russia. Rubo had repeatedly been cautioned to keep his expectations low, so he was prepared for the worst as he watched the newest batch parade around the training grounds. 
and focus on their every move, noting every step out of line and every minuscule fault of the soldiers. After fighting with and against so many different militaries in so many different conflicts, Warwolf was something of an expert at identifying the combat effectiveness of any unit rather quickly. He tallied the mistakes in his head and measured them against his expectations before turning to the general as right. You know what? They're not half bad. The general's visibly relieved, not for lack of trying, Mitch. I swear sometimes they were purposely get forgetting which leg to start a march with. That you, well, you start on your left, don't you? Well, we got it now. That's what matters. I'm convinced we can work with what we've got here. Tell me how they handle those small arms we got from Uncle Sam. They can handle them all, right? Most of them can shoot anything you can point towards within 500 yards. Just don't ask them to hit anything anywhere specific. Werbel felt reassured, but still gave a slight frown. Much better than I feared, but one thing is for certain. We still got a lot of work to do. Call it Uncle Sam? Eh, sure, why not? But let's not get hasty. America can still aid us. The Russians often disparage the use of the term a comrade about our sister republics, the United States of America and Siberia. United in the struggle for freedom are what less are the truest of comrades. We must call upon our comrades in Washington, and we must call upon our enemies in Langley, our comrades in Langley, and we must call upon our comrades on the West Coast and charge of shipping aid to our Far Eastern ports so that the aid flow wide and freely. Mitch, listen, I get where you're coming from, I do. But why bite the hand that feeds? Let them help us for a little while longer. It'll, it'll be good for us, you know? And my apologies, I press enter by accident. Um. It'll be good for us, and it'll be good for them. My apologies about that, guys. Wait, what? Do we... We won, okay. Whew! My bad, I thought for a second there, I thought we lost. Now, I'm still only going to send one... Transport Helicopter Division, or Air Assault Division, and one Infantry, just because I don't want to lose both, <laughs> or lose a bunch of supply and resources and, and equipment for both Mercenary Motorized. Oh, well, they call it Mercenary Motorized, because that's the division we were using earlier, but... So... <clears throat> we're going to wait for that stuff. Cool. We got about less than a month. Call it Uncle Sam, and then towards their sovereign state. As an open secret that our state relies heavily on American aid. Not just our weapons and assorted military supplies, but economic aid as well. Relief funds, industrial subsidies, heck, even staple goods like toilet paper have been making their way to the port of Magadan. But Mitchell the Warble III is no American puppet. He shouldn't act like one. Eventually, the aid will dry up. We'll be on our own. And when that time comes, we'll need to be ready. The administration is ready to begin untold or unofficial plans for economic and industrial self-sufficiency. It's time to solidify their plans and put them into action. Come on, Phil, you gotta admit, it's dangerous being so reliant on this sort of stuff. Some of the Spanish soldiers are even taking or talking among themselves that they're working for the CIA front. We've got, it. We've got the resources. We've got the ability. It's time for us to go out on our own. And we'll do that one soon. Superpower Weapons 4. Thank you. A visit from Uncle Sam. Warble glanced up from the paper on his desk as he heard a knock on the door of his office, sliding open a drawer with a wooden grin, grid, grind, grind, I, my apologies, <clears throat> with a wooden grind. He slipped his rudimentary drawing of a hypothetical AR into it. Straining the actual paperwork on his desk that did not feature sketches of rifles, he sat up and put that devilish grin before beckoning the visitor inside. The, swar the door swung open, revealing Werbel's newest business acquaintance, Agent Mason of the CIA. His dress shoes clopped against the hardwood floor as he approached the desk. Good morning, Mr. Werbel. Ah, ha, ha, vocalized Werbel chast chastenly. Mason rolled his eyes before replying, Mr. Werbel Esquire, thank you, good man. Why, what are you here to talk about today? Well, would like to make an offer for further cooperation between you and my homeland and, uh, <clears throat> this place. This is exactly what you mean, friend. Werbel, you remember how you agreed to be our eyes and ears in Russia, correct? One of the best decisions in my career as President of Siberia, yes? Well, I'd like to offer you one step further. What do you say? Further provisions, further American activities, some assistance from Uncle Sam, as long as you can give him a little room and board, understand? We wouldn't have it any other way. Take a seat, Mason. Let's get down to the specifics. Very, very good. The Oh, yeah, we can help out Iraq, but... Oh, my goodness. I'm just ready to go to war with Kazakhstan. I mean, it's 20 days, but the time we get there, our soldiers will be recalled back soon, so... Yeah... I don't really care for the fastest people down here. I mean, we'll pay. We'll do whoever pays the most. Despots. He looks kind of wild. He looks kind of happy, though. We're probably the person that's going to lose his war. Oh, hey, just whatever. I'm continually boosting up the civilian budget. Just so we get that slight more a bit of political power. So long, so long, and thanks for all the cash. A lot of well-dressed Americans were being escorted straight out of Magadan now. By now, though, the people of the city were sick of the image of the well-dressed, well-fed foreign capitalists. It didn't matter that the people leading them were Americans, too. It was thought to tactful to use men born from the same nation to handle this difficult transition period. A man stood up in front of his capital, or his captain leading them out. You can't do this, he shouted, and, his and then stabbed his finger into his camel jacket. You, you bet everything on supporting this. As I don't even know that if you can call this place a country. The captain calmly let the man's complaints roll off him like water, like a rock. His grin was plastered from ear to ear on his face. It was a rictus grin, not a friendly one. The captain's ears grinding together, a vein on his forehead bulge. Within the captain's hand drifted towards his pistol, the mouthy executive showed up. What we have here is a fair communication. You've been well compensated for your investments, but we have no more need of any of you. Your citizenship has been revoked, your workers' visas have been rescinded, and you're all leaving right away. And don't think the company's staying will fall on their swords to help you, because they won't. We need them. We don't need you. Bye-bye. 
The captain gestured for the group to get a move on. It was a hardened mercenary. All of them were coddled American industrialists. The group that did what he said, they did what they said. And there wasn't any incidents as they left the United States of Siberia for good. We need you, wor we you need Werble, America. Werble doesn't need you, not anymore. After we just had agreements and such. Cool. All right, so after this, we'll probably go and... Um, pre yeah, actually, our relations are actually really, really, really good. Do we need more artillery, guns, or trucks? Well, too bad we can't get helicopters. Actually, we're doing really good on everything else. Wow, look at that, yeah. We need transport helicopters. Oh, we go to war immediately. Cool. Very good. Mm, jets would be nice, but... Well, we got to acquire all of Kazakhstan, too, so we got to save some political power. Wagons westward. What's more American than apple pie and baseball? Manifest destiny. The doctrine know the fundamental belief that the American people are destined by God himself to expand their dominion across North America. If they could settle the American West and turn it into a civilization in the 19th century, then I'm sure as heck can do the same in Russia in the 20th. <clears throat> as God destined our valiant soldiers to scour West, bringing with them democracy and freedom, only Mitchell Warbler III, Esquire, knows. And the plans of play, something? Absolutely, boss. We're ready to move west on your orders. All right, Jerry, go. Bring liberty back to life in this docking land. 40th meridian or bust. Nice. Very nice. So we're doing really well in all this stuff, then. Yeah, I'll just save our political power, then. That's fine. And I'll get slightly more industry by doing this. Um, hmm. I'm going to keep these guys together like this. I think that'd be for the best. But when we actually go to war with like whoever unifies this area, we'll we'll put them on all under one group. So, uh, cap retention. Let's get some more output. Fourth Marion bus. Destiny awaits the recruitment poster. Its artwork depicting several arrows punching into the Western Russia. Warble found the transition between approving a poster on his desk and seeing it plastered everywhere a little strange, but such was life. God, how far, how far they, had they come? He'd gone from a mercenary working for a fascist to the president of half the former Soviet Union. No matter what happened now, he made his mark. And that's a great thing. Yet that was enough. If he just wanted to be remembered, he'd go, have gone out in an amphetamine rush in some battlefield long ago. He was after something more. Guns, booze, and glory. Oh, how the old days called back to him sometimes, but no, that not that either. Orwell's invested in Russia now. If he wanted to leave, he could have left with a fortune by 64. He sat at his desk every day because he believed in this project, however insane it was. <clears throat> Rule glanced over the maps on his desk, looking over the lines and arrows that made up of his plans to invade West Russia. Nothing like the arrows on the poster. In the early days, his army was little more than professional bandits. They invaded what they could to take what they needed. Now they were thriving, and Russia was too. Magadan's port was more crowded every day, maritime shipping breathing life into a severe economy. Russians lived with the measure of prosperity they hadn't seen since 45, and they knew it. Orwell felt proud of himself. He was cultivating something beautiful in this accursed land, something Russia had only seen briefly in its entire history. Democracy. Russia would come to enjoy the same freedoms as Americans had lived since 1776, and his people would love literally just like God-fearing Americans did back home. Let the hordes to the west assemble on the border, Orwell thought. He had his fate on his side, and the most bad dude army the world has ever seen at his back. Long live the recklessness and the brave, and time to spend a lot more money with Into the Atomic Age. Russia has been, long, has been long regarded as, by powers near and far, as a backwater, a vast heap of full peasant farmers, decades of revolution collapsed, and civil war has done little to challenge this perception, but this will soon change. With the resources, human and otherwise, that we have acquired during our campaigns of reunification, we possess the ability to begin a nuclear program. The power of the atom is a great equalizer in the name of geopolitics, and we shall now act to harness it for ourselves. Very, very good. How are we doing? How strong is the Kazakh army? Well, we lost nobody versus 6,000. We got four divisions. I'll just tell these guys to get over here. Where are you guys? You're like only half strength, which really sucks, but whatever. Nothing we can really do about that. Oh man, that sucks. Now, most normally. Hmm, it's 35. Getting rid of those wouldn't change a thing, so. Oh, better. Yes, yes, yes. Infantry weapon improvement 9. Yes, please. After this, Slavish goes facilities. I love infrastructure. The closed facilities, please. Thank you very, very much. Just as we are desperate to unlock the secrets of the atom, our enemies are equally desperate to prevent us from doing so. Although there are many ways to increase security, very few are absolute and absolute security is necessary when the stakes are so high. We will therefore sequester our entire nuclear program, the laboratories, the enrichment facilities, reactors, and production lines, and close the cities. These cities will not permit any entry or exit to anyone without direct authorization from the highest levels of government. Although cumbersome and expensive, such as are irrelevant. We must have safety and security for the program, and we will. Alright, so we can spend political power here. I kind of do want to do that, but... Hmm. We'll see. Oh. Uh, 
even more military factories? No, don't mind us. Let's grab some of that. And let's grab some of this. National Redemption Front, huh? Oh, man, they're, they're still falling apart even harder. Nice. We're looking good. Oh, that's a lot of cast. I like that. And actually, you know what? We're going to need an entire another line of this, so... Not too worried about it. Alright, so how many divisions do we have? Because these guys are not unifying for some reason. Omsk, I'm not sure what Omsk is doing. They've got a lot of divisions. You no know, focus re... Zykov. Army of National Liberation. How many soldiers do these guys have? Well, no manpower, which is good to see. Up to 49, so we still get to improve our army just a little bit more. I think that'd be good for us. Uh, we can do one of these issue research grants, maybe. I want more... Oh, academic base will improve. I like that. Research facilities will improve. Let's do that one just because we get more monthly gain on that. So, foundation for research. More than 20 years of civil war has, among many other things, all but destroyed the educational infrastructure of the nation. And later, the emigration or death of most competent scientists and physicists. If we were to have any hope of continuing completing our nuclear program, we must address this. We cannot wait for skilled scientists to make themselves known or return from afar for advanced institutes to be reclaimed. We must act. We will directly fund the universities and research centers that we do have and monitor them closely for students of loyalty and aptitude who can be directly recruited into a development program. Nice. Beautiful. Now i got so many more places to integrate. For 40 days, it'll take some time. It doesn't really matter which ones we do it to me. I don't really care. I really don't. Alright, so. I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to actually send you over here. Because then I'm going to replace you guys over here. There you go. And who are going to help out next? National Redemption Front, huh? You guys, ultra-nationalists. Navarro? Well, that place is a mess anyways. Civil War, Iberian Wars. Iraq? Oh, Iraq is still on fire, huh? Republic of Kurdistan? Well, they are a conservative democracy. No one really likes us, so... I guess we're gonna help out the Kurds. They won't be disappointed. Awesome. There we go. Good luck, guys. I guess... I mean... If we need to, we can take out Tomsk, right? Might as well, right? Oh my goodness. Holy crap, what is going- how many civil wars are they going to have? National Socialist Jose Luis de Ares? Holy crudderinos. Yulsk is next. After this, 12 days left, we still got about- oh, less than a billion, that's so bad. Hey, we finally got paid maybe 10 million. Not much, but hey, I'll take it. That's so what we got that many days left, 37 days. Well, I'm going to address our Uranium problem. Russia is truly an enormous land, possessing many varied resources in abundance. Unfortunately, however, Uranium is not one of these so far as we know. Without a steady supply and reliable supply of Uranium, we will have no program and thus no bomb. Thus, there. Therefore, we must make every effort possible in order to find the supply as soon as possible. No matter what is the cost, we must find new sources of fizzle material. Oh, Alexander Novikov. Very cool. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Fresh planes, ready to go. Oh, you guys are actually attacking already, huh? Wasn't planning on doing that, but okay. With two divisions here, you should be able to do okay. Actually, before we do anything else, how many planes do we have, actually? How many planes can we actually send out? Oh, they don't even have a nearby, so it doesn't even matter. Uh, fighters, casts. We probably have actually quite a bit of casts. Let's get yeah, one more thing to cast. Is that limit? Good. Well... Actually, let's do this. Do it like this. Get you guys on. And there you go. Get some cast on those guys, too. That'd be good. Should be able to win this battle. Should. There you go. Now, if you guys could get like, down there, you cut off the capital. It would be more than fine. There you go. Capital is ours. There you go. Oh, did they even upgrade yet? Skirmisher, uh, eh, not really worth it. Support weapons four, not bad. Support weapons five, good enough for me. Well, both of you come down here. You just go down there and just like Basra, Basra. Oh, they actually showed up there, huh? You know what? I'm think I'm done spending extra money on that stuff for now. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do boom, 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 boom. There you go. Loads of spending on that stuff. Nice. Very good. Alright, so you know what? You just go ahead and take all these areas out. That'll be fine. 
Next up, address your inner problem. Expand the Siberian mines. Deep within Siberia lies Krasnoyarsk, although important for other reasons. The region is also notable for possessing vast quantities of uranium deep below the surface. Uranium that we can now exploit. In order to properly do so, an entire mining operation and the infrastructure surrounding it will have to be built from scratch. The effort required will be enormous, but the cost will be even greater. But such is irrelevant. We must have that uranium. Nice. And we won. Too easy. Better anti tank? Why not? Even more military factors, yes. Just throw all those on there. We need way more aluminum. Holy cow. And rubber. Uh, I don't mind paying like America for some more, so. There you go. And a little bit more rubber from Republic of India. There you go. Nice. Actually, oh, we need we don't need other technology yet, huh? Alright, so let's go ahead and start doing like justification to take out the rest of the former Soviet Union. Integrate, yes please. Government proposals, nothing's changed there. Oh, there we go. Prepare for reunification. It doesn't really matter. A grand showdown. Good, good, good. Emergency reserves. That's fine. More infrastructure. Um the military factors we're kinda of doing okay on, so I'm gonna kinda of wait on that. Fortifications. Ask ah, so we'll probably get them anyways, why not? Because at this point. We just gotta take out Tomsk and such, so. Anyone have upgrades? Actually, Werbel. I'm actually gonna replace you with this guy, because he's not a mercenary. And as much as I love Werbel, Werbel leading special forces. Now, we could help out down here, but at this point, we might as well keep going on. And the Kurds, they actually are free. They own all of Iraq. This is weird. Is this meant to happen? Probably not. That's alright. Budget-wise, hey, that's not too bad. <clears throat> Keep popping out the infrastructure. Doing that will be probably pretty good for us. Expand the southern mines and source for our materials. If we cannot find enough uranium to support our program domestically, we shall have to look farther afield. Legal and otherwise, agents will be dispatched across the world uh, to research and investigate both known and rumored uranium deposits. Whether it be by, by the material, trade for it, or steal it, we will acquire it. The program must continue, and a bomb cares little for where the material inside it comes from. Honestly, Spain is looking like Germany if... Spoilers alert, if Hadrish actually wins a civil war, so I mean, they're constantly in a war. Civil war, again and again and again. And some of the national socialists are winning. Yeah, we can help out these guys, but at this point, I just want to keep seeing what we can do. Well, as the Air Force, whatever. Uh, I'm going to continue integrating other areas, too. I don't want any rebounds. We have over 200 factors, that's not bad. <clears throat> 224, not bad. Not bad at all, if I do say so myself. Good, good, good. Keep building, keep expanding, keep doing better, better work. 28 divisions in total. Make that 29 now. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and deploy you guys a little bit closer. There you go. Uh, does that work? Maybe. Chase the sun. Although it will be a long time before we have an operational nuclear weapon, we have successfully built the infrastructure necessary to ensure that we eventually will. Our laboratories and research facilities are constructed and secured. Our educational institutions are turning out. <clears throat> Scientists with the necessary skills, our agencies have secured both domestic and foreign sources of fissile material. All that is left is time. When that day comes and we complete our first nuclear test, we can take pride both in our accomplishments and in the knowledge that Russia will at long last be free of outside interference. Very good. Shah's uh, Iran has been assassinated. Well, I'm so oh, another one? Holy crud. Nice. I would like to make these guys 40 combat with, actually, so... You know what? There you go. Iranian Civil War. I mean, we could get involved, but I'm more interested in Russian affairs right now. Good, good, good. Sweep westwards. Uh, let's see. We go to war with the Provisional Commissariat of Russia and pretty much everyone else. I'm Vorkuta, so... That kind of sucks. I mean, I'm not too worried about these guys. They have a lot of divisions, but they're still a lot of manpower. Actually, are they able to... They've probably been able to quote everything, right? And we're done with our focus tree. Great. Great, great, great. Go ahead and integrate the rest of these places. They'll be good. And... Theoretical development. Just do both of these if we can eventually, so... <clears throat> 1.55 is not... Actually, not that great, but... We're trying to core a lot of places, so what do you expect, you know? Right, so we'll probably try to move in here pretty quickly. Um... Maybe I'll put you guys up here, actually, just because you could probably actually move pretty darn quick. Toss was going to be a little bit of a problem for us, probably, but that's okay. A little bit of lag. Got to save. Totally normal. There you go. All right.
right. Yeah. And that's your base. Second night of the long knives. One death always away from Utopia. Lad does not forgive weakness. No, it is not. <clears throat> now that's going up a five a month. Hmm. Industrial expertise is going up by 6.75. That's not bad. Five and a half is not bad either. Military austerity. Start slashing. Um, we could do that. Why not? Why not? Iberian Wars, we're going to just close out for now. I don't really care too much. Sweep westwards. I don't care how much territory the enemies take. I mean, we're just going to win anyway, so... Alright, so we're done with all that. Let's grab some military construction. And then, actually, I'm going to go ahead and come over here and do some resources stuff. You guys should be able to capitulate these guys pretty darn quickly. Sweep westwards, my friends. Stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Alright, we're putting a lot of infrastructure up, which is great and all, but... More civilian factories. And we're done making military factories. Hey, I think we're done making military factories. It costs so much, and we have so many factories now already, so which is great. Don't get me wrong. But we could use a lot more planes, actually. Anything else that we could use a lot more of? Um, we're doing. We're looking just really good all over the place. Early fighters? Sure, why not? Since you guys actually will need them, so. And these, these guys don't have anybody. Improve anti tank. Duplicate this if you can. There you go. You put some planes on your other planes. Cool. We can kind of let time go on. doesn't really matter too much. Better anti-tank. Awesome. There goes part of Iran. Iran's falling apart. So be it. Whatever. Improve American relations. We're already looking pretty good with each other, so... And maybe I'll save up political power so we can integrate more areas. Um, once we, like, defeat Omsk and such. Or maybe improve relations with the Americans, you know. Come on. Sweep westwards. Three days. Three days. Three days. These guys invade. Well, they have no... How do they not have any manpower? I guess they, this, uh, this is literally all cores, so... There we go. There we go. Oh, wait, I didn't give you... Mr. Mulcalover. Mr. Mulcalover. What is wrong with me? Probably quite a few things. Oh! There goes Surgut. Alright, very good. Um... Alright, Mitchell Warble. Special Forces time! America, or, uh, Siberia. Go right ahead. Actually, you guys should probably move fast enough to just get to Sverdlusk. This is, this is one of the weird campaigns where, actually, we've done really, really well, but this, this part of Siberia is not unified yet, which is very, very odd. There goes Omsk. Not bad. All right, so you guys gotta do the entire front line now. Just get to where you need to be. I'm not too worried about it, so. All right, are we awarded these guys, too? No, we're not. We're not awarded Vorkuta. Very weird. All right. Oh, there you go. Do that. Not bad. Very, very odd. But, oh well. Alright. Come to the next capital. God, I love helicopters. I love helicopters so much. Iran. No one cares about Iran right now. I'm sorry. Oh, they even had a few tanks here, huh? Is that enough to capitulate them? God, I hope so. Save for guys. Anyone want the capital? You girl will probably capitulate. Yep. Okay. This is going a lot faster than I thought it would. But then again, did we have? Did we, are we lacking confidence here? No, not at all. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Advanced phase. Uh, actually, I want to integrate more areas. That's more important than anything else. Ends the towers probably next after that. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, we could keep doing this, but. And I like it, but still. Integration is probably a little bit more important than anything else, really. If you guys want to move in, go right ahead. I have no qualms about you guys moving in and having a good time. Then again, did I not give you orders? I might not have. No, I gave them orders. They just choose not to move. It's fine, whatever. You guys are still trying to get on the line. Could you guys actually win? If you attack? For the most part, yeah. This is one of the easiest times actually reunifying Russia in the last stage. 13,000, we lost 2,000. They have more divisions than us probably, but that doesn't mean they're any better. Uh, with you guys, I'm actually going to have you come up here. Go to Perm and just encircle these guys. There you go. Just keep them in place. Go 
Come on, good. Oh, come on, man. You can't do that? Come on, get in there. Come on. Good. At least we got it's like one division. That's nice. We've lost quite a few guys already, but they've lost 48 thousands, which is uh, pretty nice, I'd say. Now, so I want you guys are like right here, so it's easier, so we can like concentrate, circle, destroy, all that normal good stuff. You guys stop attacking for now. That'll be good. Now, 20 thousand losses versus 60 thousand losses, not too bad, not too great, but not too bad. Alright, get you guys down here. As long as we concentrate our guys, we'll be okay. Now hold, because these guys are pretty quick. Usually pretty quick, at least. Let's right, so go here and go to there. Keep these guys in place. They're cut off. Circle and destroy. God, I love helicopters too much. But not really. There's no there's not enough love in the world for helicopters, right? Beautiful. Oh, that's so nice. So nice. Actually, if you want to be really crazy, you can go down like that. Losses. They're probably over a hundred thousand, that's what I thought. That's good, that's good, 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 good. Two men. We're integrating these places so quickly now. I love it. Hope you guys love it too, because this I I really enjoy TNO. Oof. All right, three divisions can move out there, do a pretty good job, hang out, have a good time. There are only 20 combat with, like I said before, but A, we'll take and use whoever we can. I'm going to circle all these guys. All right, so best player, eh, we'll probably try to come down there, actually. Even more military factories. You guys go there, you guys go there. Do some of that. Not bad. There goes those guys. Oh, but we don't get encircled. All right. Uh, yeah, right there. Why not? And you guys have left too. We're gonna force the attack on the front lines. Cut these guys off. Good. And circle and destroy. More divisions. Don't mind if we do. Good, good, good. Help them out. Help them out. No, 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 no. Get over here. Go, 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 go. Come on, get over there. Piece of garbage. There we go. We got him. Woof. All right, boys, head on in. Actually, I'll take the military security. I won't lower that anymore for now. Go straight for Samara. Get everyone else in the south down here off. Not bad. It costs so much to get these helicopters, but they're so good. You're all ah. Halfway dead. They have lost over almost 300,000 soldiers. It's obviously going to be... Oh, yeah. It's going to be, be even more, which is nice. Uh, would anyone like to kill these guys off, please? Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Yeah, we'll do 50. Why not? Good, good, good. Over 116 billion in terms of GDP. Not bad. What happened to our helicopters? Oh, they're still moving out. They're still having a good time. You guys go there, 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 there. Oh, we gotta go all the way up to there. Yeah, that sucks. 
That really does suck. Over almost 400,000 men have been lost. They have six divisions left. Yeah, we've completely won this war. It's nuts. Let's go straight for the victory points. Great. 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 And we're done making divisions. Let me except for mercenaries. I love mercenaries so much. Mercs, so much fun. Infantry light or anti tank. Let's grab some support weapon six. That'd be great. And there goes our helicopter division, and they're almost gone. Four hundred thousand losses. Three divisions left. We've lost less than forty thousand soldiers, which is four hundred thousand, my friends. I believe it's time. Let's go and pause this. Oh, look at the only place we can integrate. Uh, oh, we don't have all the control of the Western Siberian states, huh? Oh, okay, so we have to kill these guys off, too. Now, we can let music go on. This is very weird. That we Do we not get anything about, against these guys? Just in case, let's go and build the infrastructure around here first. Um, that's very, very weird. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting this. Well, it looks like we have to use console commands then, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's get our soldiers on the line. We'll invade Vorkuta, have a good time, and go to war with them, and then kill them off and probably end the episode in the campaign. All right, our guys are here, pretty much. And we use console commands with a weird dude up here. So, what was it? Allow, oopsie. oopsie. Allow Diplo. Play war. And then take it off so the AI cannot use that. Pretty good. Get some more planes, I don't care. It doesn't really matter to us. Rukuta will be ours. This is very weird that we did not, it, we're not able to go to war with them normally, but whatever. We're getting a lot better early help. We're only using early help helicopters too. Oh, we're moving in. That's good. Let's come straight up to here. Man, we are going super slow. Super slow. Like Angles? That's fine. Come on. Unfulfilled import requests. Oh, India. There we go, my friends. There we go. Nope. I hope you enjoyed this campaign. I have. I quite have. So. I'm messing with Russia. And what the international news outlets in the U.S. are calling a shocking turn of events and what the German state-run media is claiming as an American plot, Mitchell Worldwell III has announced the formation of his United States of Russia. Worldwell American citizens originally arrived in the port of Magadan as a mercenary. When only what he describes as a wild ride, Worldwell stood up, or ended up, sweeping westwards and unifying what pieces of Russia remain free from the German jackboot. Worldwell had the bands of mercenaries flock to his cause and in return harness his powers of economic force. Exporting soldiers to the highest bidder in complex zones throughout the world. The international community waits with bated breath to see how this mercy will wield the reins as a state. I guess that's it for the sound effects, and we shall conclude with... It's a lot of time. Destiny made manifest. Glasses clink, laughter roared, and corks soared. The sound of celebration was drowned out of thoughts, but Werewolves determined to take a second th to think about what got him here before drowning in alcohol and women. They did it. They actually did it. All of free Russia now lay beneath the eagle's wing in the light of American-style democracy banishing the darkness of anarchy. Since the declaration of unification... Uh, foreign investments increased tenfold. Any corporation worth a gosh darn in the free world is opening its first establishments on Russian soil, bringing half the planet's products to people who never seen even a modern radio. The demand for foreign goods was never satiated, and back home business was booming. Speaking of business, the United States of Russia was now firmly established as a preeminent export of mercenaries worldwide, changing the tide of many a civil war in the name of gold and glory. Those who called it the mercenary state usually did so as an insult, an attempt to question the legitimacy of the USR's rule. But Werbel accepted that name with pride. Never had a nation like his existed, and never won. Never will won again. Of course, they, some weren't happy with the result. 
Who scares? There was, never was a mercenary who cared about the complaints of a liberal uh, dudes back home, and Orbel was no exception. Domestically, however, there were a number of Russians protesting his rule, and it's something he did take more seriously. Orbel wasn't too worried about it, though. You could only imagine the culture shock they were experiencing. In only 10 years, Russians have gone from taking pot shots at each other with Mosin and Gans to driving American cars and enjoying American freedom. They'd get used to it, he knew. He'd make Texans out of them, yeah. As his train of thought concluded, something caught his eye. Two somethings, to be exact, some of the biggest ones he'd ever seen. Warble didn't think, speak much Russian, but a wink was worth a thousand words. As she approached him with an experienced stride, the old mercenary indulged in one of the final thoughts. It's good to be king. And there goes our campaign. The United States of Russia has been formed, guys. And I hope, I really hope you enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed this campaign. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait for TNO2 TNO to come out to see what could happen with Warble leading the United States of Russia against, like, German Reich and the Einheits Pact or the Unity Pact. So, regardless, if you did like it, if you liked the campaign, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in a different campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.